Picture this scenario, there's been a situation, the internet has gone down and the only communications device you have is your smartphone. But that's not gonna be much use if the internet has been compromised, or is it? So what we're looking at here guys is an application called Sideband. Now this runs on a system called Reticulum which I'll go into later but basically what it allows you to do is send messages backwards and forwards between two smartphones here that are not connected to the internet. So we can basically say hi on this one and you see it pings through on the other side. Now obviously this isn't too exciting, we all do this every day with message apps on the internet but the point here is these phones are literally just connected onto the same Wi-Fi network. There's there's no internet connection on this Wi-Fi network. I've unplugged it and you can see me doing that now. There's no cellular connection. You can see this one doesn't even have a SIM card in and this one is in uh, flight mode as well. So you can see that as long as these devices have some kind of connection between them, and I say some kind of connection because it doesn't have to be a network connection. It can be anything. More on that later. As long as they've got a connection, this will work. But for now, we're going to concentrate on Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi is everywhere. You can easily connect to a Wi-Fi network. And the cool thing is it doesn't matter if the Wi-Fi connection has internet. So here are our devices again. This time we're using a little Wi-Fi hotspot. So basically this is a 4G hotspot actually, but I've taken the SIM card out. So you can see here the little red light means there's no internet um, present on there. There's the SIM card, I've taken it out. So these phones are actually both connected to this hotspot by Wi-Fi and it still works. So it works absolutely fine. So what I'm gonna try now is I'm gonna take this little hotspot and I'm basically just gonna stick it up in the window up here and we'll see what kind of a coverage area we get for messaging. Right, so I'm just outside now, probably about, I don't know, 20 meters away, something like that. Um, you can see here, I've got flight mode on and we've got pretty much full signal from the little hotspot, which is, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna try and just send a message here. So I'll just do something simple. Test outside one. I can't even type whilst I'm trying to do the camera at the same time. Um, so test outside one, and then we'll send that, and that's delivered straight away. Pretty cool. Right, let's walk down the down the street a bit more. Obviously, I already know that the range is going to be quite limited on this um, because it's using Wi-Fi, and Wi-Fi doesn't generally go that far. Um, but it's it's actually looking pretty good because of the height of the um, the little hotspot up there in the window it's actually doing fairly fairly well. So we're still connected. Let's just try another little test. So test, what am I probably like, I don't know, 50 meters away, something like that. It's actually showing full signal here. So test, and that's delivered perfectly. So yeah, look, you can see, still showing full signal. All right, let's carry on. We are still pretty much line of sight here. So I'd expect, you know, as we go amongst the houses and stuff, we'll probably, we'll probably lose it. But you can see here, we've definitely come like another 15 or so meters, um, still got a Wi-Fi signal. So let's just do another little test. So we'll say probably test um, 70 meters away, something like that. And that's delivered perfectly. So you can see guys, this, this works pretty well. Right, so a little bit further on now, I'd say that this probably is about 100 meters away. Um, signal's getting a bit weaker here, although well, it has actually just gone back up a bit actually. Um, so I'm gonna try, try a test here. We'll say this is 100 meters, I'm not 100% sure. But, the th wait for all the cars to go past, do another little test, and you can see it's starting to think about it now. Um, will it go through? This system is supposed to be designed for um, pretty resilient, bad network conditions. So we'll see if it actually does go through. I'm not 100% sure how many times it tries or all of the sort of technical stuff behind it. Um, it's not looking likely, is it? Right, okay, so we have got a failure. So I'll try again and we'll see, you know, if it is possible to, to make that connection. Yeah, it's done it now. So, you know, it's flaky, but it, it can work. Right, so I've gone a bit further and we've completely disconnected from the Wi-Fi now. Um, so you'd kind of expect that because there's a lot of houses and stuff in between. Okay, so I'm back inside and you can see all of the messages I sent came through. The last one, obviously, I, I retried, didn't I? Because it failed, but they're all there. I'm actually very impressed with that. I mean, you've got to remember that is a hotspot. I literally, all I done was just stuck 
a hotspot which is designed really to be you know a matter of meters away from your phone just to provide it or you know a laptop with internet connectivity it's not designed for like you know scaling out a kind of 100 meter radius um, around an area so that is that's pretty good so if you wanted to fold out your own communications network whether it be for an emergency or whether you need to do it in an area where there's no internet connectivity and communicating directly between devices is difficult you could easily use this approach and the hardware you need for this is readily available everybody's got a smartphone and everybody's got a wi-fi router and if you place the wi-fi router somewhere very high maybe even a loft space would work you'd probably find the coverage would be very good now whilst all that's sinking in you might be thinking oh well, that's all very well and good but we need the internet to actually download this app well this brings me on to another very very cool feature of this system you only need one device with the app installed and then you can actually start this repository server and this starts a web server on the device that other devices can visit and download the software how cool is that so if you're interested in trying this out, I'll leave a link below in the description to this website. This is kind of the homepage to Sideband. That's the application we've been looking at today. Now it's important to realize that this system is way deeper than just exchanging simple messages over a connection. And Sideband is basically a client for reticulum networks. You'll also notice here that you can use it with LoRa, packet radio, Wi-Fi, ITP, or anything else. You can even use it over a serial connection. It's incredibly powerful. Right now this application runs on Android, Linux, and there is a Mac OS desktop app as well, although I haven't tried it. So it's quite flexible, but unlucky for iPhone users, it doesn't work on iOS. But that probably won't come as a surprise. To install on Android, just head down to the installation section here and you can click on this APK for the latest release on GitHub. You can see the Android installation file there. When you first start it, it will do a quick setup and it will generate your unique key. The cool thing about this system is it is completely encrypted and you can stay completely anonymous if you want to. There's quite a lot to it, but the simplest way to get going is to announce yourself by pressing this button here and that announces you on the network. Once you've done that, you can go to the announce stream here and you can see if anyone else has basically announced themselves. You can see here, somebody else has appeared on the network. From then on, it's quite simple. You can simply start sending messages directly to them and it's very simple to use. As I mentioned before, it's pretty cool that you can use multiple ways to connect to other devices. So here we can see we're just using our local Wi-Fi and Ethernet connectivity. We can use TCP, ITP. You can use an R node as well, which is a bit like a Meshtastic node. You can use a radio modem that could be absolutely anything. And you can also use a serial port as well. So very cool stuff indeed. I'm definitely going to be doing some more content on this, so watch out for that. What with all the interesting stuff that's been happening with Meshtastic lately, it's got me thinking about faster data networks now. Because of course, Wi-Fi and other wideband systems, they offer a lot of bandwidth, so you can do a lot of other things, like voice communications, file sharing, and other things like that. Imagine if you had a proper Wi-Fi router with external antennas mounted somewhere really high, and then you kind of called the SSID of the router connect to me when a user connected to it it served up a web page and told them to go and download sideband and then you could converse on there that would be seriously cool anyway the imagination can run wild let me know what you think in the comments guys it's always good to see them and i'll catch you in the next video